Hello, my loves. I hope you're not too spooked. Welcome to my NYX Face Awards submission. I am here to help you with this fun kind of Japanese horror-inspired queen of the damned that wheels the souls to hell. So let's get started. First and foremost, I am going to take glue and we need to smear down those brows because as you see in the finished look, we really don't have any brows. So after you put this sticky glue stick on your eyebrow, you are going to blow dry it to make sure that it stays dry. And then we're gonna go on with some translucent setting powder just to pack down the brows before we go in with foundation. I'm going to also prime my skin. We don't want any pores or anything kind of upsetting our creepy horror inspired look. And then I'm going to go in with the most matte foundation I can find and a great foundation brush and we are just going to pack the foundation on our face like it is nobody's business. I'm also going to go in with more of a flat foundation brush to pack the foundation over the brows just to ensure that they don't come peeking through that glue and that powder. But Lord knows because my brows are so dark they still did it. I'm not shocked. So yeah, after we get all of our foundation down, we are gonna go into that contour. I'm just taking a fluffy shader brush and some black grease paint, which is actually the main ingredient in this makeup tutorial, and we're just going to start contouring and hollowing out our face. This will take some time, a ton of blending, and you're gonna to wanna to use that wet beauty sponge as well to really make sure that we blend this into the skin and hollow it out. So with this work, we want to have a really good camera ready feel, so blending in that contour to take out the hollows of our cheeks, add great dimension and shading is definitely the key to this look, so it will take some time. Don't get discouraged, because at first it will feel like you're just doing a ton of black lines on your face, but the more you blend and just continue to kind of trace the hollows of your cheekbones right into your mouth area and along your jawline, you will look emaciated and very spooky, trust me. So I'm using a contour brush to kind of go in and do the furrow of my brow so I'm kind of making a little bit of a angry face and then I'm going to add some shading in there because anywhere that we have bone structure to add depth and dimension we want to add that grease paint into. I'm also going to take a little bit of just a brown contour shade again to add more color and dimension to this look with a contour brush and you see I'm making a really funny face there just to kind of go along where my cheekbones are because we want to look hollowed out and sickly. I don't think this woman has eaten in a long time you know she really spends her time kind of doing some spooky stuff. So then I'm going to go in with a mixture of brown, white, and black grease paint on a stippling brush just to age out the skin and really make it look kind of creepy. And you're going to want to use a stippling brush because it adds the greatest effect to the skin without looking smeared or like there's paint all over your face. It kind of creates this awesome gray shadow effect. And we want to do it directly around the mouth on that nasal labial fold, fold we see, which comes out from the nose, because it's going to look like all the moisture and the happy plumpness in our face has kind of been drenched and leaked out of our skin so I'm going right along those cheekbones connecting into the nose and down to the mouth to create great shadow and shading to kind of feel more skeletal with the look so next we're going to do the collarbone area and that really just starts with you know our good old black paint and we're kind of going to just shade out the hollows to make ourselves, you guessed it, look more emaciated and skeletal. So I'm kind of like hovering and pressing in my bone so I can see where to do the shadows the best and then kind of pulling my neck taut and like pulling the muscles so we can see where we would shade and hollow out our anatomy. But you kind of just map it out first with the black paint and then of course we're going to go back in and shade it with black shadows, just blend it out with our sweat sponges just to make sure that it looks airbrushed and camera ready we want to look gross and just also remember that if you get confused or you feel like this tutorial is moving too fast the great thing is you can always pause it and kind of map out what you're doing and then come back to the tutorial for the next step so I am just going back and forth with the stippling brush now in that same black brown and white paint mixture that we made to kind of give more depth and dimension as we blend it out and the stippling brush brush is amazing for blending it's always going to help shade and deepen and darken <laughs> our face look. So wherever there is going to be dark we need to add light to kind of add volume to the face where we want our high points of the face to be and again to make ourselves look skinnier and more emaciated. So I'm going to take just my regular matte foundation with some white paint and blend it together and we're just going to go in with the good old makeup sponge and hit the high points of our face blending it in with the sponge in our fingers to pull those points of the face forward. This is also kind of known as a highlight. It will be a matte highlight though again just to make your face feel a little skinnier more emaciated. So any place that we didn't put the shading we're going to put the highlight to make it more effective for this look. 
I think it's best to go in with the foundation and just some white paint um, instead of like a white shadow just so it actually sits better on the skin, easier to blend in with the black paint that we used as well. You can always go back in with a little bit of shading and eyeshadow to make the look more complete. My favorite part of this look, the eyes, we are going in with the NYX Jumbo Pencil and we are going to kind of do a cut crease. This shade is dark brown and we're really going to just map out around the eye to kind of make them look more sunken in, a little more bugged and crazy looking. And we just carve right along our crease on the top and the bottom of the eye. We're going to go in with a pencil brush to make sure that that cut crease is seamless and blended into the skin. Next right over the eyebrow, we're going in with some red paint and just our fingers and we're going to start pressing and dabbing it into the skin. We use a couple different colors to create more of this like bruised hollowed out effect so just follow along with that cut crease line and some red paint of your choice or red lipstick does a great great job the matte red lipstick from NYX in Eden um, is a really good choice actually just to really help mark out and create this nice beginning to our bruised eye look and just kind of pat and press and then take your wet sponge if you need to and blend it right out and then we're going to go in with a shader brush and some deep plum purple shadow and we're just going to create our next layer of shadow over this look and also bring it down along the nose to kind of create a contour along the nose and hollow out the face and I am just doing back and forth patting motions along that red paint and then I'm going to do swipes back and forth and up and down so it's kind of pat 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 back and forth with the shadow up and down the more blending we do the better this look is going to turn out go back in with that sponge and just a little bit of that highlighting paint as well then we're going to go in with another more pointed shader brush in black which is obviously the best color in this look and we want to start going along where that cut creases and start at the center and then kind of blend our way up and out into that red and purple shadow just to create more volume and dimension and depth we want to be able to see all the colors but when you're painting with deeper colors like this to kind of create more of a bruised effect you do want to go from light to dark so that's why we start with red then go to purple and then go to black taking that black under the eye along that part of the cut crease as well you're going to shade back and forth and then with no additional products on my brush I'm just going to go blend back in with any shader brush to make sure that the look is blended completely and going again with the pencil brush so just back and forth with your brushes you're going to keep adding that's the nice thing about this look take as much purple and black as you want and just keep adding over top until you get your desired look next I'm going to take just that mixture of white paint and foundation and we're going to take the color out of our lips guys if we're gonna suck souls out we know we can't be having cute color in our lips and just take your makeup and also put it along the lids of your eyes just to help pull that part of the eyes forward to kind of create a sunken bug-eyed effect and then go in with your wet beauty sponge and make sure everything is blended seamlessly I'm going to take a little bit of yellow paint here because with bruising we find at the end of the bruise it's going to as it's trying to heal it's going to start creating that you know really sickly yellow look to it so we wanted to just add another color in there to make sure that this look is again that cinematic awesome horror feel so just with my finger and some yellow paint I am dabbing right along basically those highlight points and right around the eye to create and just that added bit of kind of like sickly uncomfortable look and you can see with the eye how it just kind of pulls everything together and then lightly taking some translucent powder we're going to dab everything over and then taking that red matte shade in Eden we're going to dab it in the middle of our lips to make it look bitten and to top off the look you're going to take some NYX matte spray and douse the face in it and then you're going to start adding your costume so I just took a little lace fabric to make a veil Bobby pinned it into my head of course wanted to make sure that it stayed there and then we're going to go and grease up the hands so just to you know add a nice little extra bit of depth to this look you know she's not doing a great job with things so you're going to take that black grease paint and put it all over the finger oh girl you sing okay you sing so that's what the look looks like without blood on your eyes so now we're going to add in the effect of blood so just taking a little bit of fake blood or you can water down some red lip gloss you're going to take a q-tip and start dabbing it around the eyes and then pulling it down and just kind of dabbing motions with a q-tip and then spreading it back and forth be very careful around the eye area you don't want it to irritate the eye area then take a little bit of water and dab it on the tears so that it starts leaking down the face more and then dab it along the top as well and you guys are done you killed it and I'm so proud of you and everything that you've done. So let me know if you have any questions. I really hope you liked this look. And I hope we make it to the top 30, guys, so you can vote. And we're going to absolutely kill it. Thank you so much for walking and I watching. Wow. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.